Welcome back to The Bleeding Truth. My name is Sally McNally. I'm the Irish midwife. And I'm Bridget, Sally's daughter. Today, we'd like to have a wee chat about mothering and mothers because this weekend is uh, Mother's Day here in America. Yeah, and we want to kind of have an opportunity to talk about our relationship um, and Sally's uh, experience with so many women and mothers over the years, um, just to kind of ask some challenging questions and also tell some stories. Right. Yes. So, of course, mothering is my favorite subject. Um, First of all, being Bridget's mother, (laughs) as you can imagine, uh, was a great adventure. Um, I remember uh, having that positive pregnancy test and uh, (laughs) it was very exciting because I was already 35 and I didn't really think that I'd ever get pregnant. And here I am. Really? Holding this. Yeah, I just, I just hadn't like, of course I would have loved it, but uh, when it happened, it was like, what, really? This Mm. is real? And uh, we had just gotten married um, and I was looking at this positive pregnancy test and I was like, how am I going to tell Johnny? You know, I'm so excited. And he came Mm. home from work and I tried telling him and I started to cry because oh. I was like so overwhelmed with emotion. And his first thought was, oh, no, she's gotten another speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so when I told him, no, no, I have a positive pregnancy test, he was relieved <laughs> and happy. Another speeding <laughs> ticket. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So it was great, a wonderful, happy time for both of us. Um, Yeah, I I only saw him cry a few times, but that was one time he was like so happy. And um, right from then, um, I I felt so excited and bonded and ready to to be a mom. And I remember, um, you know, laboring with you and I wanted to do natural birth because I had been preaching it and how could I not do it if I <laughs> had been preaching it all these years. And um, I was uh, I was lucky to be able to do that natural birth that I, I had planned in my mind. And it was so amazing uh, welcoming you into my arms. Um, I'll never forget that moment when I laid eyes on you. Uh, I, I was shouting, I love you, I love you, as you came to me. And... Um, I've been in love ever since. (laughs) (laughs) And your little eyes, you were looking at me and like, you were like kind of stunned a little bit. (laughs) Like Johnny said, you looked like a lizard. (laughs) And I've been pushing for like over three hours because of course you decided to come the long way home and um, your head was a little long and cone shaped and, um yeah <laughs> I knew because I was a midwife I knew that everything was normal but poor Johnny was a little worried mother but child you, you were still fine and you were like gazing at me and uh, <laughs> within minutes you were breastfeeding and off we went and wow. it was just the best time of my life wow it it made my life it made me really uh who I am I I didn't really have like a proper identity of who I was, what I was mm. about, but but being Bridget's mother was a huge part of who who mm. I am now. That's an interesting perspective for sure. Yeah. I kind of want to dive into that. Um mm. but before before I get into the like identity of being a mother, I kind of was interested you said, you know, you were 35 and you weren't sure if you were ever going to have kids. Why, why was that? Do you think you just didn't trust in relationships to like take that next step or what? I I guess yeah. I was never really in love enough um, that I wanted to reproduce that man. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like Johnny, like, of course, 
you know our love story. We fell madly in love, and <laughs> he was like, let's make a baby. Like, and I was like, Let, let's make a baby. It was like, we got okay. it. Like, yeah, it was like, um, I, I guess I, I never felt safe enough. I think when a woman is in a relationship that she feels safe, um, it's it's easier for her to decide. Yeah, now mm-hmm. is time. Or if you because, feel like it's stable, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, even animals will do that. They'll they'll mate with the the with the with the opposite um, sex that looks like they're strong and they're going to provide and they're stable and all of that. They're they're not going to do you know deliberately have a baby with somebody who's not stable i mean people do that too but (laughs) they do i see it all the time right yeah right but that's super interesting but i was just really lucky enough to have met johnny that i felt that i can't imagine you ever not you know becoming a mother i feel like i know you'd be doing a lot more yoga but (laughs) there'd be a piece missing (laughs) I mother everything that yeah. is alive around yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> you do. Yeah. yeah. So, so so then the identity of being a mother, like that's huge. Um, it is. I'm sure a lot of people could relate to that. Um, yeah. I was a risk taker mm-hmm. for sure before you came. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden <laughs> my life changed. I was like, I got to protect myself so that I can look after this infant I right you know no more risky stuff no more wild no more fun no more fun (laughs) no more fun (laughs) but the real fun was beginning seeing you you know um read or seeing Mm -hmm. you walk or seeing you feed yourself even for the first time it was like all of that for mothers uh, or for you women who haven't had babies yet, these are the real adventures. Right. I mean, I, I've spoke before how I used to think my life was so fun and, and adventurous and interesting. And I'd go home and I'd visit with my sisters at home in Ireland and I'd say, look at my photos from around the world. And they would be feeding their child, you know, little yeah. spoonfuls of food uh, while they go, oh, very nice, Sally. Oh, yes. But their face was you know, for their child. And I, I didn't get that. Can you imagine? Right. Right. Now, now I understand all of that, that your life is different when you have a child, your life is more important because now you, you, somebody really depends on you. Right. What do you think about, I feel like there's a, there's definitely a trend of younger people not wanting to have kids right now like and I think there's partly just immaturity some young people are like "Ah, I don't want kids but then as you get older that changes I feel like more so now there's a lot of people actually not having kids what do you I love that that? young people have a choice that of course they don't have to you know I I think that there's a lot of things involved there economics uh, you know and that stable relationship because like 50 percent of people having divorces that's huge isn't it well yeah that's also scary yeah there that, isn't a union. stability to have kids yeah, but is that if there's so many factors to it that i feel like a lot yeah. of like competing things yeah right especially as like a woman myself mm-hmm. like you want to have like a stable relationship and then you also don't want to get trapped in like a traditional, I don't, I mean, personally, I don't want to be a stay at home, like mom my whole life. I want to work Mm -hmm. and I want to like make something of my own, but then those identities are competing. If you want to go and work, then you're not as much like, yeah. Right. making the time and space to yeah do the other things <laughs> that are right. also and, important yeah and that's that's included in the choices that women right. have nowadays that some women will choose to be stay-at-home moms and some will choose to jostle and uh, do 
some of the at home stuff and and have a career as well. Well, that's what you did. That's what I did. Yeah. And it was hard. And it it was a very hard at times, Bridget, because I missed some things. Like I'd work I used to work night duty. Mm-hmm. Um and sometimes I'd have to sleep because I'd have to go back to work that night. And you might have, you know, a birthday party to go to or, you know, a little ceremony to hmm. do at school. So um, your father was, uh, you know, present for everything. Right. So he he was like extra fathering, doing mothering stuff as well. But why not? You know, that's right. Well, yeah, I don't think there needs to be like a, you do this and you do that. Right, right. I didn't, I didn't ever see it as you were missing out. So. Right, because you didn't maybe notice because I. You were there for a lot. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah. I was sleepy. (laughs) I remember you drinking a lot of coffee. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, the nights, the nights I remember were. Very, like, I don't think I knew anybody else whose parents were, or mom worked nights, or worked as much as you, to be honest. Like, you're you're a hustler, so there were always things that either I was tagging along, if you were teaching yeah. a class, or a yoga, or something else, yeah. mm-hmm. um, that I, like, don't remember other yeah. moms doing, at least. I wasn't exposed to it, but... You were busy. Sure. <laughs> I know. And I feel kind of like, I wonder, did I make mistakes with that? Because, I mean, I maybe was selfish wanting everything. I wanted all of the things I wanted to do and I wanted to be your mother. Um, I'm sure I could have done a lot better by, you know, less Turned out okay. me stuff and more your stuff. But the the you stuff weren't, about you it was about your patients or other mothers yeah that's right other mothers yeah. yes yeah um, so I, I don't know i never i never harbored any <laughs> yeah any problems you, yeah i i think, think if anything you taught me that it is important for me to be to identify with more than just like a relationship or yeah Mm -hmm. you know I I don't see myself being a complete stay-at-home mom unless maybe I have 10 kids I want to work still and that's part of like my identity is I want and that it is possible to do both it's probably Uh, a lot harder but yeah yeah and in some areas you might not do it in an excellent way like you want to mm. but you do your best like when we would have time together it was always really quality time i would try to be like really focused 100 percent there for you pre cell uh, phone time too pre cell phone yes it's it, the world's different now yeah the world is yeah, yeah. We used to like go in the garden and play with the frogs and the tortoises. Mm-hmm. And the, the little yeah. volcanoes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember oh, that. Yeah. Um, I had some questions. Can I ask you those? Yeah. There you go. Okay. What was the toughest period of parenting that maybe I wasn't aware of growing up? Uh, probably the first two weeks of your life. Because that's a really hard time for a young mother, Mm. uh, especially first time mother. Uh, You're, you know, some some of us want to breastfeed and the breast milk is starting to get established. And uh, I remember my nipples were really sore and they got cracked and they were bleeding. Oh, and no. yeah, and you were very hungry and you wanted to feed all the time. And oh, <laughs> every no. time you'd latch, it was like daggers in my chest. So I was like, ah. But um, <laughs> it was that you had started to breastfeed, um, sucking the wrong way. Uh, so you were you were latching onto the nipple part and not onto the areola behind the nipple. Um. So you were made it blistered in the beginning and then it got really sore but it was wow yeah but and and we didn't have a lot of lactation consultants around at that time that I could have gone to even though I was a midwife and I knew that you 
you know, could have started latching better. But uh, yeah, that was really hard because um, I had no sleep uh, and it was like, I thought it was going to go crazy. <laughs> but You're then, like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> it was like, it was that first 10 days, two weeks. And I remember it so well um, that uh, I I tell my patients now that it might be that two week period to get through that, um, and also to to benefit from all of the great support that that's around. You know, mm-hmm. we have so much better education now about breastfeeding um, that that women don't have to suffer like that. That their nipples don't have to get blistered and and bleed and. Right. And that, you know, um, sleep is so important. Yeah. That you you can go kind of crazy if you don't sleep for two weeks. <laughs> but it was, and then all of a sudden everything worked out, you know, that from then on, there was a beautiful, uh, my breasts were full just as you got hungry, you'd feed and you'd go back to sleep and that's pretty and, cool. <laughs> yeah, it was perfect. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But earlier, like, yeah. 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 What about... Um, so that might yeah. have been the hardest time. But then there were other hard times too. Mm-hmm. Like when you became a, a teenager around <laughs> the age of 13, 14, and you were so beautiful. And I would see men looking at you mm. in a sexual way. And I, I've been in the world so long, I knew what they were thinking. And you had these long legs up to your neck. And of course, you were a swimmer. You were always, you know, barely wearing clothes. <laughs> and, and I felt like I sometimes always... this rage inside me. Mm. I'd want to go and blind the horrible men that would look at you. But oh, wow. I mean, they're human. They. they I looked. React. I looked older than I was. I think. And you yeah. always looked older. Yeah. Um, but in my mind was like, how can I protect my daughter from you know mm. the evils that I know were in the world? Mm. Um, so that was difficult. That I'd never thought about. Yeah. Yeah. So I was constantly saying, do you know the 360? Where's Mm -hmm. the danger? When you go into a place, where is the danger? Identify that first before you start relaxing and having fun and be aware that there's always something to be afraid of. And you used to get mad with me. Used to say, you want me to be afraid of the world. And I was like, be afraid of the world. (laughs) Be very afraid. <laughs> yeah. So that's very hard for a, for a mother. I mean, that's a, it's it's even a discouragement to be a mom yeah. because yeah. the thought of bringing someone into a world that you know there's so many shitty things Seriously. going on, yeah. and I think that's dramatically increased with the internet. Like yeah. the things that you were teaching me about were like when you're out in the world and there's people around you and yeah. how to identify where you're safe or not versus yeah. the internet where you don't know like what your kid is doing yes, on there. that's right. And yeah. I mean, luckily I just watched a lot of Netflix when I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think now, now that I'm, way more exposed to all of the things that can go on online that are dangerous. That's scary for me. I'm like, I don't know if, if I were to bring a kid into the world. Yeah. This is a whole different ball game. Yeah. Like how do you protect them? <laughs> I know. And of course the danger Without could being be in... a helicopter. Yeah. Right? The danger can be even in your own home. You sure. Know? Yeah. Um, but that's that's super interesting. Um, what what else was hard for you? Uh, well, I guess uh, when when uh, you left home was very hard. When you grew up and left home for college, yeah, yeah. You know, we only had one child yourself, so um, you were under the microscope. Mm-hmm. Everything you were doing, everything you were wearing, saying. I was involved in um, 
and and so fun to uh, be you know involved in all of your swimming to come and watch you and you were so amazing and and you were our identity and then all of a sudden you're gone and I'd walk into your room and look at all your oh. things and <laughs> and hold things that would still have your vibe on it and um and now you guys have painted over that taken over my room <laughs> and you're like ah she's gone <laughs> Now we that have didn't... boxes of your stuff in the garage. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's not like a death in the family, but it's a, a new part. It's like yeah. that you never get that part back. And mm. if any any parents are listening to this, you know, it's true. That that part, it's gone forever, where the child is dependent on you, you know, for food and clothing and and shelter and there's a very deep connection when when the person is is dependent on you and you feel like mommy bear you know or daddy bear you can still Um, bring me food it's fine (laughs) i'll always still be hungry (laughs) right (laughs) but you've been my biggest teacher Mm. uh, about life yeah everything everything all your milestones were milestones for me mm-hmm. uh, and reminders to me about you know about things we see the world again through our babies and our children's eyes yeah the making of a mother is is, is their children you know mm-hmm. before that we're children ourselves <laughs> So thanks for making me grow up (laughs) and be an adult. Well, then to follow that, um, was it hard for you and dad to, I don't know if the right word is merge, but how did you guys work out, you know, your parenting styles? Did you have things that you disagreed on or were at at odds with how, how I should be raised or... Um, well, after a few years, he he gave in. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, I think I had an instinct about being a mother because maybe my own mother, um, uh, but an instinct about how to let you be yourself. You know, not to like corner you in a box and say you have to, you know, have this religion or these politics or, you mm-hmm. know, stuff like that. It was interesting to see the flower bloom instead of, you know, to graft it and change the colors and to let you be yourself. Um, and uh, I think he's he's like that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I just breastfed you the whole time, right. like right. You know, breastfed for a long time. Um, uh, so I I kind of like had a lot of time with you in those right. first few years. Um, yeah. And uh, he was very protective, mm. very protective, very um, like and very he would have been a great mother but how can we say that nowadays because he's parenting it's not like mothering or fathering it's parenting but it's funny you can still say it (laughs) so I think he was better than me in so many ways you know like he would do things like you're getting out of the swimming pool on a freezing cold morning at six o'clock after your training and he might be there with the towel that came right out of the dryer and it's still warm oh yeah he would do that to keep it warm. That's so I know. spoily. I never did that for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, uh, here's a towel. <laughs> but that's just a tiny example of the way he was. Like to get you to like eat healthy snacks because you were vegetarian all the time. Um, he would make them interesting looking on the plate, you know, like cut them up in little cu- cheese cubes and mm. put them neatly on the crackers and and cut up like little veggies and mm-hmm. I would just give you the thing, you know. <laughs> he would make Sally's it like, just like eat it. Like <laughs> no, I remember like the pistachio nuts. He'd make me um, mm-hmm. have ten a day. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. And right. he'd, yeah. he would just be tenant. I don't know how he made it fun, but it was like he'd crack them open for me because I wouldn't do it on my own. Oh, right. Yeah. See, that's the way yeah. he's so thoughtful. Way more than me. And I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, I think you were <laughs> thoughtful in other ways. But um, I think you're you're also tough, too. You don't like to... Well, I wasn't. Or I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I feel like I'm spoils me now, yeah. but I wasn't spoiled like that. Now, way, yeah, now you know. get spoiled. <laughs> yes, yes. But, um, yeah. What about um, when I was like teenager? Was there like disagreements on how you should handle me then? Because well, there were, uh, yeah. you went through your modeling stage mm -hmm. where you uh, you had some training it, it to be a model. And um, he was very worried about that. He was like, why would, would we want her to do that? And I allowed that to happen because at the time you, you hadn't um, a lot of self-confidence and you didn't like the way you looked. Mm. Uh, and you were amazing looking you were so beautiful um, and I wanted you to know how beautiful you were that that you know I thought that that might give you the self-confidence that you you really wanted um, and I think that um, in school there was some mean girls you know and there's always mean girls wherever you go. <laughs> True. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, I guess you felt self-conscious and gangly and taller than everybody. And gangly. Gangly, yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to to let you see that that's a good thing, that, that that's what most women would love, that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that all your clothes fit you. You don't have to, like, take them in or take them up or... You know, you just step into the clothes and you're the exact right size that the designer wanted. Um, but um, I, I, I allowed that so that you would be able to walk down the runway with that feeling of like, I'm Bridget and it's fabulous to be me. Sure. And yeah. I saw you doing that a few times and I was like, yeah, great. And then... Um, you were presented with an offer um, to go to, I guess it was the Middle East. To it was Asia, yeah. Asia, yeah. Or yeah, it was Asia to train in modeling, you know, and to be a model, a uh, high fashion model. That's what they were saying. And I, and my heart was like, oh my gosh. And you were 14 and you said, could I continue my swimming training over there? And they were like, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, how important is that to you? And you were like, oh, no, I couldn't be out of the pool that length. Oh, no, no, no. And it was like a big no. And that, that was perfect. It was like, that was a really important moment that I saw you becoming uh, an adult. Mm. And that was fabulous. You, you chose your swimming career over the uh, yeah I remember modeling. that I was I said that to <laughs> what are, yeah. well, whoever they were they were like the agency I was like yeah I, I turned them okay. down <laughs> yeah you did but I don't I think I had like... a full conception of like what I was yeah. turning down either like I didn't fully right. get yeah. it I was just like I need to swim <laughs> That was it. But, um, it. It didn't matter what it was they were offering. You had to continue swimming. And I often wanted to tell your coach that you had done that, you know, but uh, he'd be like, why was she wasting time with that? Yeah, he, anyway? he wouldn't have liked that. <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting, though. What about um, regrets? Do you have any regrets of mothering? Yeah. Yeah, I... I I know I could have done better for you in so many ways. Um, time. I wish I'd had more time with you. Uh, so maybe I regret working quite so much. Mm, don't say that. I, I know. <laughs> because it's time is your most precious asset. And, and that's time we can never get back. I mean, right. 
That's Maybe true. if I had brushed your hair more or uh, gone for more walks with you or, you know, at Disneyland. I think I went to Disneyland once with you. Oh, I'm glad Dad, we don't need to go to Disneyland. But it's it was... like, that's an example. Like all of those mm. things he would br- would bring you to all of these yeah. fabulous day trips. And I would have missed a lot of that. Yeah, I think it was Universal Studios. He used to bring me there like... Yeah five times a year or something we'd yeah. always go yeah. same same things over and over again. but yeah. I think he liked it <laughs> yeah and it was getting the two of you out of the house while I was sleeping for mm. night duty okay yeah. that makes sense interesting yes I'm sorry I missed a few things but um but I was always with you in my heart you've always been the most important person in my life I think I think probably to to do with how how we weren't distant because we were always in the same home but I was pretty independent because of that too I think yeah like I've always been okay with like being apart essentially yeah like I wasn't ever super homesick leaving yeah which probably and makes you that, sad but <laughs> no that's what I wanted I didn't yeah. want you you know here with me at age 30 you know that would be that would mean I, I kept you in the nest I wanted you to fly fly and fly far and high as you can <laughs> and and then come home with adventures and tell me all about them <laughs> <laughs> which now I do yes um, yes. Okay. Well, but what's your perception of me as a mother? I thought you were, you were always like my inspiration. I loved how hard you worked. That was like my goal. Oh, um, great. To, to have like passions like you did, which you still yeah. do. Yes. Like you've picked the things that make you happy and that at least I guess bring you value other than identifying as a mom and right yeah you you're just relentlessly following them and wow that that wow. is something that like I admire a lot um <laughs> gosh it's like gold in my ears what you're saying it's like so amazing because that's the stuff that mothers like me feel Mm -hmm. guilty about that we go and live our careers and have we denied our children anything and you're saying that that's the part that inspires you and that makes me at least that's me I mean I I I think in other ways I was sheltered a lot yeah yeah maybe just Ventura is like a little nice bubble but there's there is a lot out there that once I hit college I was a lot more exposed. Also not having yeah. siblings, I think was probably a hindrance. <laughs> yeah. You know. See, I probably could have prepared you more for that stuff. Or or just more for conflict because you wanted everything to be good and happy. And that's also just your personality is like always the positive side of things, which is awesome, but when other people had conflicts with me, I had a hard time dealing with oh, it because yeah, I didn't yeah. fight it out, mm. I think, with siblings right. or... You didn't know how to fight it out. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. how to handle other people yeah. not being, like, wow. yeah, satisfied with me or, yeah. you know. That's so interesting. But I think a lot of that's just not having siblings to, like, you know... To learn how to yeah. fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm sorry, I should have fought more with you. No, no. We we fought a lot. <laughs> we fought. We, we fought had a lot. Fight. <laughs> um, You're yeah. a good fighter. You're a scrapper. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, that and I think in in the angle of being angry, I think I you you always did encourage me to be like a raw yeah. type, which yeah, which right. is probably one of the things that I avoid now, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I was pretty 
aggressive i think yeah right in the world and that you would like come out shouting (laughs) is that what you mean well it's comes it's all that combined of not handling conflict well and then just being very angry but I think that's part of Mm. like when you're younger is a lot of just emotions but I I remember being called aggressive while I was yeah at least on the club swim team and I was like I was combative with everybody (laughs) Well, you Coaches, were a lonely child right. and you were used to getting your way probably. And yeah. But yeah. but you were proud of me that. for like standing up for whatever I was like mad about, which I right. think is good because yeah. that like encourages me to be more confident in my own position. But the way I was doing it was not good. Like now I, right. I really avoid not conflict, yeah. but mm-hmm. lashing out. <laughs> So you can control your emotion. Yeah, better. To get your, your point across. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. But overall, overall, I was always very proud of you as my mom. Wow. Thanks for that, Bridgie. Yeah. That makes me so happy. Because, <laughs> um, you know, when I think about mothers, uh, I've... I I see people becoming mothers. That's my job. Yes. Yeah. And I often wonder how those babies are going to grow up. Right. You know, who are they going to be? How much love will they feel as a baby and as a little kid? <clears throat> and I'll be honest, I have seen some babies that I feel kind of worried about. Of course. You know, that uh, the bonding might be a bit slow uh, to start or that you know that the baby wasn't planned so the pregnancy isn't like a wanted one or the, or the relationship with the partner doesn't feel close mm. um, and then you feel kind of sad for this baby uh, but um, most of the women I witness giving birth have this glow that as soon as we place the baby up onto their chest and into their arms, there's this glow. Their eyes change, their face changes. They gaze at their baby. And the baby, of course, in most times, is looking right back. And, you know, we're still down at their vagina, getting the placenta out or maybe stitching a little tear or something. And they're still gazing at their baby. And there's this relationship forming between the two of them that's it's uh, it's just magical it's so beautiful it's so warm it's so loving and that is like sometimes I think of it is that the moment she becomes a mom you know that moment are we witnessing something like a love that's right there in front of us it's very nice it's yeah it 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 fuels me to do the next delivery. Sure. Um, but um, sometimes we can't place the baby up there. And sometimes the baby might have to go to the intensive care unit or mm. over to the warmer or they're separated for some reason, an emergency C-section or something. And, and then that moment is like, oh, it's gone. That first moment is gone and I always feel bad for those babies and those moms um so we try to get them back together as soon as possible of course course. right yeah right but at what moment does the woman become the mother you know is it when she looks at that pregnancy test and realizes I'm pregnant or is it when she feels the stirring of the baby inside her uterus you know, when the baby kicks and moves or when she hears the heartbeat or sees the baby on the ultrasound, is there a special moment that it, it happens and that she becomes mother or, um, or is it when the surges of the contractions start, you know, and, and, and the labor and the hard work of getting that baby out of her body, um, 
you know, is it when she's pushing and she feels the pressure in her bottom and the baby's coming down or when she's crowning, you know, what is the moment that that person becomes mother? Mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very amazing uh, thing to witness. What do you think? What's your answer? I think that it might be before she even gets pregnant. Um, mm. I mean, I remember being with Johnny. I just got married and uh, we went for a walk on the beach and there's this huge big rock down on the beach in Santa Barbara. And uh, I climbed up on it. And of course, I was all yogi yogi at that time. Uh, and I'm doing this really deep back bend facing the ocean. And then I'm doing my back bend, pushing off the rock. And I felt something opening inside me, like my heart and my mind and the ocean. I could hear the ocean. And he was going off looking at shells or something. And I could feel this something. And I think I might have got pregnant that night <laughs> uh, when we went home. But um, I, I felt like I was calling you saying, I'm ready now. Mm. It was like a, a moment. I remember that. Right. So for me, that was the moment that I became your mom. And you know, I wasn't even pregnant yet. Wow. Uh, but for for other mothers that I witness, I I think there's some of them are shocked when we hand them their baby. And it's like, what? And it becomes real that now the baby's out of her body and now the baby seems to be now in the room even though the baby was in the room all along, now she she's gazing at her baby and it, it becomes real. Right, right. That doesn't mean you weren't a mother before. It's just that you're able to comprehend it in a different way, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, through the years, I've seen some really sad uh, cases where I've had to hand dead babies to moms, you know. Does that... Uh, is that her moment she becomes a mom? You know, that's it's, horrible. Yeah, but not all babies throughout the years, you know, can make it for various reasons. You know, um, but then um, you know, mothering is very interesting, Bridget. Uh, mothers, when when they have their newborn, they they change. They become like grizzly bears, you know, and and they're focused on feeding that child and keeping that child alive. And when the baby cries, it's like an alarm bell in her mind. An emergency is happening. I'm mm -hmm. going to get to my baby and fix that emergency and um, feed the baby and change the baby. And it's like emergency for for you and me. It's like a oh, cute baby crying in the crib, right? Um, but they become so powerful uh, and, you know, they may have a tear in the vagina. They might have hemorrhoids. They're going around with a big pamper in those first few days. Their nipples might be sore. They're exhausted. Um, their body has changed. Their mind has changed. And yet their focus is on what does that baby need from me? It's right. like amazing. And that's how we survive, of course, throughout the ages. But to see a woman like the day before, she might be like painting her nails and, you know, getting her eyelashes just right. But now the eyelashes might be hanging off and she's trimming those nails because they're getting in the way. And it, it's like uh, her life becomes different. They don't all trim their nails or the eyelashes don't all fall off. But I, I'm trying to get you to see that um, that that change, it mm -hmm. is a difference. Yeah, it's a good thing, too, because the, the baby needs that. Right. It needs sacrifice. Almost. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a big sacrifice. Right. Yeah. But it's only for a little while. I mean, look at now. You're all grown up and left me and... If I, I often say to Johnny, I wish we were able to have more children. I wished I'd had like a table full of children. Like when I think of my own mother. Right. Uh, she'd have us sitting for meals, breakfast, you know, and dinner. And the table would be set like a real 
set it table and uh, the table was full of people right. and food and conversation. Um, and it was a feeling of belonging and uh, home and family. It was beautiful. Um, I mean, my own mother, she was, it's hard to talk about her because she's um, gone now, you know. Right. Um, but she was very shy, very shy and very humble. Um, and uh, I don't want to talk about it because it make me cry. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> it's real. I was different to her as a mother. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, she was, uh, she had a really hard life growing up in Ireland. Yeah. But um, that's hard, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> I do want to talk about her because she was, a great mother she was like all sacrifice all in yeah con constantly at home uh my father made her give up working so that she would be a stay-at-home mom right and she didn't really have a choice in the matter like her job was a cook um in this hotel and in this yacht club, she was also a cook and she was great like like a hundred people would be coming to dinner and she was able to like make sure everybody had on their plate what they ordered, you know. Right. She was, like, really amazing. And she was great with food. Uh, at home, we had a garden. We'd grow our own vegetables. And uh, she would have, like, beautiful meals for us. And we didn't have a lot of money, but she was able to, like, give us, like, really good tastes. And I always grew up with that, that I want, like, real food on my plate, Right. You know, so you might think I'm kind of a snob where food is concerned, <laughs> but I, I'm not. I just know real food, you know. Right. Um, but that was a big focus in our family, like real food. Uh, so um, she was very hardworking. Uh, and I kind of like feel sad because like, you know, the way I would be vacant maybe because I was working outside the home, she would be vacant because she was working inside the home. Like she had this OCD thing where she had to clean constantly clean and tidy and fold and iron. Mm -hmm. And it was hard to get eye contact with her and say, sit and talk to me. And we want, I want to mm. talk to you. And I remember uh, being the youngest, of course, right made it even harder to get attention my sisters uh, my five sisters did a lot of my the mothering for me mm. you know um one of my sisters in particular ronnie she was like uh, the mother for me um but uh so i remember when i got a little older um i i got into honors class uh, for english when i was in high school which was like amazing because I wasn't that good in school um, but I got into this honours class and uh, part of it was to like read you know and to read out loud read the prose and uh, I my mother'd be working and working and working and I'd come to her and I'd say I have to read out loud and she'd say oh lovely sure read to me while I'm doing this and she'd be working 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 and I'd follow her around reading my prose out loud and every now and then she'd stop and she'd look at me and she'd say oh that's lovely and then she'd go back to work Aww. but it was like it was like she saw me and she heard me and I felt you know visible sure in yeah yeah but uh, I never got enough mom I never did really? funny to say that you know because uh, it because I'm sure all of my sisters could say it you know you never get enough um and we she used to uh, give me a job of uh, doing the vegetables you know you'd love to get that job because you'd be in the kitchen with her uh, a lot and um so peeling the vegetables or that was a big job. 
um, but she she really did try her best. But sometimes um, she didn't protect me the way you know she probably should have. And I hope this isn't going to be on the podcast. <laughs> But I think that she had a really hard life growing up and things happened to her maybe that, um, you know, made her accept things that maybe happened to us as, as, as children. It's hard to talk about that. I don't really want to. Okay. So we'll get rid of that part. Um, but grandmothers <clears throat> I mean as a grandmother <clears throat> I saw her being so strong and so wonderful and she loved any kind of child this is kind of sad but um, when I see other grandmothers too in the labour rooms sometimes I see the perfect scenario is a mom <clears throat> coming to be with her daughter in labour you know and of course the daughter's partner so that's a really good mix to have your own mother for most most of uh, the women. Um, but grandmothers, mothering mothers, that's what I see. And uh, it's a really nice thing because they love their daughters, you know. Sometimes they're like loud and boisterous and talking about their own births. And sometimes they're quiet uh, and kind of humble. And sometimes they're like, concerned and worried um, and I I see myself in all of those those mothers that I'm, I sometimes think how would I be if my daughter was in labour and I probably shouldn't even be in the room um, but uh, I, it's lovely to see that that other generation <clears throat> being um, in the labour rooms with me I love that I love that energy um, but sometimes the there's the absent one, you know, the the mother is pushing her baby out and then where is the grandmother? It, and maybe she's absent and there's not a good relationship, uh, absent even from the conversation, you know, I try to get to know the family and where's your family and, you know, what about your mother? And, you know, sometimes I hear sad stories or sometimes they don't even want to discuss, you know, the the mother. So we all can make some mistakes, you know, um, and we're none of us are perfect as mothers. Right. We're all trying to do our best. I know my mother tried to do her best. Um, but I uh, maybe we should uh, finish this little conversation about mothering. I um, Seamus Heaney, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he was an Irish poet mm -hmm. and uh he wrote a poem about his mother and it'll strike uh, a chord with a lot of Irish people because I think my experience with my mother is very common, like being from big families and you know, vying for her attention and never getting enough attention, no, never getting enough of uh, the mother. But I'm going to read this to you and maybe we'll finish with this. Uh, And it always catches me a bit. When all the others were away at mass, I was all hers as we peeled potatoes. They broke the silence, let fall one by one, like solder weeping off the soldering iron. Cold comfort set between us, Things to share. Gleaming in a bucket of clean water. And again let fall. Little pleasant splashes from each other's work would bring us to our senses. So while the parish priest at her bedside went hammer and tongs at the prayers for the dying, and some were responding and some crying. I remembered her head, her head bent towards my head, 
her breath in mine. Our fluent dipping knives, never closer the whole rest of her lives. I'm sorry, it just always makes me cry. It makes me cry because you never know, um, you know, when those moments will be gone. You know, and I was a little girl peeling potatoes with my mother and I didn't even know that these were my precious moments. So I hope when I'm gone, Bridget, that you'll have better moments, better memories and more. And I'm sorry I worked so much. Oh no. <laughs> I wish I could get some moments back. I'm sorry for crying. I'm not a crier. <laughs> I'm not a crier at all, but, but this is, it's, it's your mother. When you think about your mother, it's so deep inside us and it's, it's so um, important. Like, I came from her body and I was even told that they were praying for a boy when she was pregnant with me because I was the sixth girl and I guess I always felt I had to like prove my worth you know mm -hmm. and and say I'm here anybody see me I'm here and maybe that's a good thing it's a driving force inside you know to but uh, I see you. You'll never have to do that. You'll never have to do that with me. I see you. I hear you. And I'm here if you ever need me for anything. You, if you needed me, it's still like an emergency bell inside my head, you know. And I'll come running every time. <laughs> So sorry, this is so emotional. How weird, huh? It's okay. I didn't expect it to go this way either. <laughs> no, I didn't either. Should I try reading that poem again? Because no. I think I cried the whole way no, through. No, it's okay. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry if this is unusable, but it's good talking to you. <laughs> I, think, I think we needed that. But I see you too. Thank you. I want you to get out there, Bridget, and live your life. And you can do it all. Tell Jan, you can do it all. <laughs> you can be a mom and, and uh, have a career. It's a good reminder to not take things for granted. Yeah. Yeah. But get as many moments as you can with your babies. Hold them, love them, look into their eyes. It's the best time in the world. So thanks again for listening. We really appreciate it. And um, if you like what we're doing, give us a bit of a review on Apple. That would help us so much. And um, if you come across a subscribe button, press the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything.